with the in-car camera, I remember reading articles saying that the original versions were really heavy, boxy, maybe 50 pounds. dangerous, right? 50 pounds. Yeah, if they told, tur turned over and then the thing would kill them. Oh my gosh. So how did you get them in the cars? <laughs> On their faith in my good word. <laughs> <laughs> and it seemed to be enough. <laughs> yeah, it got by that time. It wasn't for long because that, when you look at those cameras and the way they were set up in there, Jeez, the problem that we had before that was, what did it mean? Nobody knew, uh, they couldn't understand why that was so important. Car running around in circles. Mm -hmm. You put the camera in there and they'd pull up and something would come by them or they would go by them. And it changed the whole attitude about the driver. Before, it was just some bozo from South Carolina driving around in circles. Now, the opportunity was there for the viewer to see what the hell they were going through. Yeah. And that's exactly what we had seen in Australia and come back and said, we've got to do this and we've got to do it quick because the economy was there at the same time in Australia. I don't know why he was there, but he was. And I said, well, you can't f around, we got to get this done. And we've got to own it, that in-car camera, because this is going to change everything. And the best part of that story is the... Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, who was that? Who was that doing that? That was the mystery of the year at so, Daytona. So tell me, this, tell me that story. We had the best sound guy in the business that worked for CBS. <laughs> and he, he had done everything for them. And he said, I've got a problem. He says... We pick up a harmonic out of <laughs> Kale's car and we can't get rid of the fucking thing. You gotta help us with it because we don't know what to do. So they <laughs> fussed and fooled around for a while and they couldn't fix it. And finally, <laughs> finally after a while, the audio guy said, I think I got it. <laughs> it's not the car, it's not our equipment. It's kale. Yep. <laughs> and it was. He'd get up in the banks and all of a sudden, ah, you know, and it'd go on for eight or nine seconds and then stop. And then it'd start again. And it was at a, a strange harmonic and nobody thought of it as a human voice at the time. <laughs> and we discovered that our problem was that we had to get a new driver in there or else <laughs> muffle him because he couldn't hear it. Why did he do it? Huh? Why did he why, why did he do it in the first place? Subconscious thing that he didn't even know he did. He had no idea. He had no a, idea? I don't think he that? had an idea in the world that he did that. As good as their audio was, they couldn't control Kale. <laughs> Not many people can control Kale Yarbrough, maybe. <laughs> Nobody could. Nobody could. And Remember he used to fly with that, that bear he got they finally took him out of the air because he had that little plane and Susie the bear would end up in Atlanta or somewhere with him in the cockpit flying the, <laughs> with the bear sitting beside him oh my gosh oh Jesus and he thought that was so cute and so much fun we're talking about like an actual bear right bear a real bear <laughs> where'd he get it where'd he get Susie the bear piece from? of <laughs> <shit> out of me <laughs>